Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a deck profile here for dinosaurs. Now, I wanted to show you this particular build first because I'm actually planning to do two deck profiles for dinosaurs. One that focuses on the older cards still being technically viable in this particular format. And then I'm going to build a second deck for our dinosaurs or rather an alternate build for this utilizing all of the newer cards that came out but with that being said definitely leave me a comment down below uh, as to how you guys are actually building dinosaurs i know that with dinosaurs they're kind of like the zombie decks where you could essentially build anything you want based on how you feel your build should actually be and this is what makes uh, decks like these so fun because it's not about the archetype it's more about the typing of the monsters and in this case dinosaurs are a type they're not an archetype uh, so that makes them really interesting to be able to build decks in such different ways that uh, you could just have your own subjective builds to it but if you guys find this video enjoyable definitely drop it a like share comment and subscribe it really does mean a lot but with that being said, let's begin. So starting off here, we're going to be playing three copies of the Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. An absolutely amazing card still. Even till this day, it's one of the best boss monsters out there, especially coming out of a structure deck as well. Being able to banish off two dinosaur monsters just to special summon it out, and then even having... Uh, a beefy attack at 35, having an amazing effect that can attack everything your opponent has and also being able to burn your opponent as well if it's attacking a defense position monster. It's just so good. It's really amazing and it kind of covers everything out there and what it's really lacking is mainly what the deck it's played in might lack not necessarily the card itself. So definitely a really good boss monster. Next up, I'm playing two copies of the Overtex. Overtex is a really interesting card. Not too many people open up with this particular card, or they don't really want to bring out this particular card with your Evolution Pills. But I actually think this is a really underrated card, and one should actually be going with the uh, Evolution Pills to bring out your Overtex. The Overtex essentially negates spells and traps. That's all you really need to know. Sure, it's not as strong as something like Baron, but that being said, it's still an incredible card that can uh, definitely slow down the opponent to a certain degree. I'm also going to be playing here three copies of the Soul Eating Oviraptor. It's the main search of the deck, that's pretty much it. But it also combos off really well if you draw into Lost World as well. So, together with the Lost World, going with the Soul Eating Oviraptor and going for your a uh, cycle of plays to bring out your baby Cerasaurus or your petite Pterodondon. Uh, definitely really amazing. Moving on, I'm also playing two copies here of the Animandorned uh, Arcosaur. Arcosaur is a really interesting card because it also can trigger uh, regardless of whether or not it's normal or special summoned. Um, and it's a bit of like that extension for your deck because let's say you don't have the Soul Eating Oviraptor. You only have three copies in your deck so chances are you're not always going to get it even if you have um, the fossil dig there's not a chance that you will get a fossil dig so you want to maximize copies of ways you could just get yourself going and in this particular case Arcosaur is that alternative option uh, being able to just strictly destroy your baby Cerasaurus or your petite Pteranodon to trigger off your plays is absolutely amazing and speaking of which, I'm playing three copies of Baby Cerasaurus and the two copies of Petite Pteranodon. Uh, I play this particular ratio because of the fact that Baby Cerasaurus just feels a bit more versatile being able to do what it does versus the Petite Pteranodon being specifically only targeting maybe three or so dinosaurs in your deck. So it doesn't really cover too many in the deck out there. So only keeping that to two but uh if you do want to bump it up there are ways you could do that and honestly adding in one extra card in your deck doesn't really hurt it too much for one ofs we're going to be playing the giant rex just a really amazing card you managed to banish this off the uh 
of the ultimate conductor then you get to special summon it back so it's really amazing and if you already have OV Raptor out on the board then that's another uh, rank 4 play which is absolutely amazing to follow up on that uh, we're also playing the Michelinosaurus crazy broken card and I think there's a really good reason as to why it's at one copy also playing the Drac Aeolo as well, just really easy to summon out. If you have your baby Cerasaurus, then you're going to trigger off this. Uh, you're also playing the Doggeran as well, just searchable off your Oviraptor. There's not much else to say. I haven't decided yet on the title of this video, but if so, the title might spoil it. I'm playing the True King package, so we got here three copies of Lithosagym. Playing two copies of your Agni Mazurd, and we're also playing two copies of Barastos as well. Also, really amazing cards. Uh, this is the ratio I want to play because Lithosagym is pretty much one of the biggest reasons as to why I decided to pick this deck up again and uh, rebuild it and play. This deck was essentially just sitting in my binder for so long, and um, yeah, it's just really fun to be able to play this deck again because Lithosagym is back at three just being able to hit extra deck cards is really important so definitely the ratio that i feel incredibly comfortable with as for spell cards we're playing two lost worlds this card still is an amazing field spell uh, a lot of people are assuming that dragonic diagram should be the main focus i like to play a two and two ratio here lost world just combos off so well with your over raptor but dragonic diagram also just pops off your cards allowing you to get started i wish i could play three of both but for the sake of keeping things to a minimal amount i'm sticking to just two copies uh, but that being said though we are maximizing consistency here so we're going to be playing three copies of fossil dig absolutely uh crazy good card with uh, what it can actually just search out in your deck there's so much more potential added on and it's essentially adding in three copies of any of your dinosaurs that you want in your particular deck uh, just by having this card there of course we're also playing two copies of double evolution peel a lot of people are actually playing uh three copies as well I think that's a bit much because it is a hard once per turn so this card is really easy to search out you only really need two copies of it to be honest but that being said we're extending with the one for one here just going for your Arcosaur really good Drac Aeolo you have plenty of targets out there caught by the grave just to deal with some hand traps we're playing the monster reborn for a bit of extension and to round things off with just a uh, well one particular trap card uh, it's three copies of your impermanence. This card is still going to be really amazing here. And considering you're not really playing any other floodgates in this particular deck, well, you're not playing any floodgates at all, uh, the infinite impermanence is a fantastic card to have uh, starting off here. So, yeah, definitely really amazing. Uh, but what can shine is the fact that the extra deck can also just uh, add so much more to this deck as well and I like that uh, both the main deck and the extra deck uh, have almost an equal contribution towards the uh, end state of your board very unlike uh, most decks these days so on with the extra deck we're going to be playing here the one copy of evil czar lagia lagia is amazing i probably might even consider dropping it up to two uh it's it's just so good it's essentially able to just negate anything this is essentially uh baron before baron came out uh, well, but we're also going to be playing one Dolka as well. Dolka is so good. Uh, yes, it's only restricted to monster effect negation, but even so, it only detaches one material, so you can get two negates out of it, making it a lot more powerful than you actually might think. And that pretty much means um, stopping hand traps, but then once uh, you're trying to go head to head on your opponent's turn, that's where you get to negate any of their other cards as well to prevent their plays. So definitely really good there. Um, of course, we are playing a bunch of level nines in this deck in the form of the True Kings. So got to play some rank nines and that's going to be your uh, Hyperiton. Hyper and your Jormungandr as well, which is uh, also just really great cards to uh, add into this particular deck. Uh, definitely makes it really fun. 
Um, but that being said, as for your other generic cards, we're going to be playing here the Tornado Dragon. Never know when you want to kill off any uh, field spells as early as possible, uh, just because it can get quite annoying. Uh, the funny thing is, I actually have gone up against um, a Generator deck. So it's quite funny because I have the Jormungandr in my deck, which is a generator, but uh, generators have a really powerful field spell, so having that Tornado Dragon out on the board ready to go, it's going to help so much for this particular deck. I'm also going to be playing the Castell as well. Castell is a really uh, fantastic card for this particular deck. Uh, definitely underrated in this format, mainly because there are so many cards that just trigger once it hits the grave. So why not go for Castell, bounce it back to their extra deck or anything like so. You know, definitely a lot more powerful in th that particular case. Now I'm going to slightly divert from uh, the XEs and we're going to be moving on to other mechanics first before I head into the remaining XEs in this deck. So firstly I'm going to talk about the Relinquish Anima. Definitely a very interesting card but just being able to steal your opponent's card as well. You're adding more versatility to this deck and Given that you have so many level 1s, uh, it really works out incredibly well. Especially when Arcosaur is your starting card, you don't want to leave that card vulnerable out on the board. Going for the Arnima is so much more powerful than you think. Whether it's baiting out your opponent's negation because you're about to steal their monster, or just stealing their monster and uh, getting something on the board other than your Arcosaur, which is a zero attack sitting on the board. We're also going to be playing here Chambara, we're playing Formula Synchron, and we're also playing Leo as well. These are synchros that really work well for this particular deck, mainly for the fact that these particular cards can easily be gone into as well, just from your Jurak Aeolo. And you have so many different levels in this particular deck that it's not difficult to go into it. In fact, I'd actually argue that... Um, well, I'll talk about one of the new cards as well, and that would be the Transcendosaurus. So the Transcendosaurus cards are kind of like a new sub-archetype within Dinosaurs itself. And uh, yeah, it just has been really amazing uh, trying out all of these cards here. So with the Synchros, I would be able to slightly divert and add in so much more to this particular deck. For example, uh, a few of the other newer cards in this deck that I technically can't go into at the moment. Uh, Dynatank and Transcendosaurus uh, Gigantozaula. Both these cards here, you can't go into them. Not yet at the moment. And that's mainly for the fact that I'm not playing any of the fusion cards. But that being said, my uh, side deck does include uh, Super Polys in here as well, and I also have a few of the other fusions as well, like the uh, Dragos Napelia, just because it's really relevant for the particular format. So this deck is sort of weird in the sense that it can play off a side deck as well, but that being said, it's a really minute thing where it's really just utilizing more of the fusion cards. Finally, we're also going to be playing here the Grenosaurus Giga Cannon and Transcendosaurus Saurus uh, Drilliganathus, uh, both also just adding some more flexibility to this deck as well. Uh, so definitely a really fun deck, and like I said, the extra deck really complements the main deck a lot. And look, when you're seeing all of these here, it's not going to be as mainly utilized. Your majority of this particular deck here is going to be uh, these cards. These are the cards you tend to go into the most, uh, just because you're either going to end up with two level 4s on the board or two level 9s on the board and uh, these all are going to be that first choice that you want to go for rather than synchro plays. If the situation comes, it's always fun to go into it. But yeah, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this particular deck profile. This is something that I find to be uh, quite fun and quite interesting as to how dinosaurs can still technically keep up in this particular format. I was surprised to see that my more closer to meta relevance uh, type decks out there like my Salomon Grades uh, actually struggled against a lot of the top decks out there 
Meanwhile, my dino's here. I don't necessarily see this as a crazy powerful deck, but it's actually performing quite a lot better uh, compared to something like Salomon Great. So I think that says a lot. And I think it's mainly for the fact that they just bring out such big bodies on the board and uh, you're finding so many decks these days, they're actually struggling to deal with one big body. So think about a deck that's able to push out multiple big bodies and each big body is capable of uh, doing so much just like the uh, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. With that, the opponent is really going to struggle and the requirements to bring them out as well, you can't really negate them. I mean, to summon out your Ultimate Conductor, how does your opponent necessarily negate them unless they play cards like Solemn Warning or cards like a Bottomless Trap Hole or something like that, you know? It's really rare for decks to play cards like that. Most people play just a bunch of Omni Negates, but they can't play cards that really negate summons, right? Just inherent summons. And in this case, this is kind of that one thing that sort of uh, overcomes that uh, particular issues. And when you're playing three copies of it in the deck as well, uh, yeah, it goes to show how powerful this deck is can actually be so yeah that being said thanks so much for joining me today and i hope you all have a fantastic day i'll see you all next time